Angels help you go within to wash away all dreams of sin. Yeah, thank you for opening up, pouring it out. That's like the, in the ego's world, the personality self and this personal perspective is, is the baseline. You know, it's, it's sticky, it's gooey, it's enmeshed, it's uncomfortable. Uh, there's anxiety with it, like an underlying low-level anxiety that can, you know, increase at times. And um, reminds me a little bit about the first Matrix movie, you know, where he basically, you know, he makes his decision uh, for the red pill. Uh, he's immediately, after he decides for the red pill, kind of, uh, I want to really, I want to see, I want to be shown. Show me the truth. Uh, Morpheus can't show him the truth because he's so enmeshed and entrenched in illusions that the truth would be frightening. So immediately after he takes that red pill, he's taken into another room where there's all this apparatus and he's looking at Trinity, did you do this? And he's got all kinds of apparatus set up and he's, he's there and Morpheus is giving him the context. Did you ever imagine yourself to be in a dream that you could not wake from, that's pretty enmeshed. A dream that you could not wake from, uh, and as he's giving him the whole context for us, the, the wall looks so, so shiny and reflective, but it starts to wobble and waver, mm -hmm. like mirrors aren't supposed to do that. <laughs> They're not supposed to wobble and waver, and he's so curious by the wobbling, wavering mirror, that he reaches out with his hand and he to touch it and it's like this liquid sticky thing you know this is the gooey mess of the personal and he starts to to touch it and it starts to move and and he's like did I you know did, what's happening did I did I do this and then all of a sudden the, the 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 gooey stuff starts to come up his cover his hand and come up his arm and come closer to his throat and then it goes all over his body and then he like caves in. It's like his whole personality self is just completely caved in in this kind of mer mercury, gooey, shiny like thing. And then he gets, he drops down into what would seem to be the unconscious mind where he's all plugged in and he's, he's in all this pink kind of embryonic goo and he's, he's trapped. He's totally trapped and plugged in. And then this thing comes and looks like a gatekeeper and it like it pulls this thing out of his neck and then it kind of flushes him down this toilet huh. it's almost like a giant huh. uh, unconscious toilet that he just <laughs> goes down and he goes into this kind of it looks like a sewer and then he goes from the sewer to this this mechanical hand kind of comes down and picks him up and lifts him up as he's just laying there and in one sense, when you turn to the Holy Spirit and you say, I'm enmeshed in the personal, it's sticky, it's gooey, it's, there's a lot of anxiety with it, but I need help, and you ask the Holy Spirit for help, the first thing that you have to go through in the healing is you've got to be flushed, uh, em emotionally flushed. You know, it's like all that that's been pushed out of awareness has to come into awareness as far as the letting go. You know how he's unplugged before he goes down the toilet, kind of the, the drain pipe, he's got to have all these things that are, that are plugged into him taken out. And it's, it looks kind of uncomfortable. I mean, I've had people who have watched The Matrix and they're just like, they kind of turn away from this scene. It's like, oh man, you know, it's great. He's come in contact with Morpheus and Trinity and the whole gang. Good, good, good. The Nebuchadnezzar, good, that's all great. Hey, he's got his, he's got his peeps, he's got his mighty companions, his mighty comps. All right, he's grooving, he's grooving, he's grooving. And what is this? You know, it's like it doesn't look comfortable at all. And I think for those that really work with the course and really give themselves over to it and say, all right, Jesus, take me, take me on a journey. It's like, well, we've got to do a major flush before we can get to the rebuilding. When, even when the little character, the naked little Neo character gets lifted up, 
kind of cranked up, and he finds himself up at the Nebuchadnezzar with all his mighty companions around him, his first thing that comes out of his mouth is, am I dead? <laughs> and he's laying there, you know, he just had all these tubes popped out of him, he's just been pulled out of the, the drain, so to speak, am I dead? And Morpheus says, far, far from it. In other words, like, with the confidence in his voice, like, oh, now we can begin the rebuilding. Now we can let the Spirit rebuild you anew. You know, he's laying there, why do my eyes hurt? You've never used them. <laughs> we never have, have used in this world our spiritual eyes, our real eyes. We can't realize the Spirit because we, we haven't even used our real eyes, our, our spiritual eyes. Let thine eye be single. We haven't, it's like that apparatus of the miracle, that spiritual vision has always been there for us. The Holy Spirit put it there in us. We could never get rid of it. We could never destroy it. Just because you believe in the ego doesn't mean that you destroy your real eyes, that you destroy your spiritual eye, your spiritual recognition. In fact, when the Course first came through Helen Schuckman in the original Urtext, there was a term that came through, and they basically, for consistency, had to kind of translate it and give it a consistent name through the Course, when they published the Course. But before the Holy Spirit was called the Holy Spirit, in the original translation, it was the spiritual eye. Not spiritual eyes, the spiritual eye, E-Y-E, -E, capital S, capital E. The Holy Spirit is our spiritual eye, it's our vision, it's our bridge back to the spiritual vision, the vision of Christ. It has nothing to do with the body's eyes, and nothing to do with the body's ears. And physical sight has nothing to do with seeing at all. Jesus says in the workbook, the body's eyes were made not to see, and the body's ears were made not to hear. What a trick! And then to believe you're a human being, and to believe you have difficulty with your physical seeing or your physical hearing, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Once you take it much, much deeper, like you did with Helen Schuckman, when she went blind that one day in her earth life, he, she went across, they examined her eyes, and they went through the neuro neurology and everything, couldn't find anything wrong. She finally turns back to Jesus and he says, well, your problem is you're having with these Eye, eyeballs and seeing and eyes and eyeglasses is you're afraid of spiritual vision. That's all he said. You're afraid of spiritual vision. The fear of spiritual vision projected onto the body looks like eye problems or, or what we would call physical blindness. But that's not it. That's just the tip of the iceberg. There are no physical problems. They're all mental problems. And that fear of awakening is the fear of spiritual vision. So, um, it was not only, Morpheus said you haven't used those physical eyes, you've never used them, but all of his muscles had atrophied because he was never using uh, his muscles in this kind of vegetable state of, of imprisonment. And it's the same way. We all have spiritual gifts, many, many spiritual gifts that want to pour through. We just haven't used them. They've been dormant. They're still there, but they've just been dormant. And the more we just open up and we go through this dismantling that, that Neo went through, we open up to our spiritual vision and our spiritual fruits that will pour, surely pour through. So, surely it's, it is uncomfortable as you're going through this dismantling. And that's why if you work with the Course as your tool, you know, it's like rip, 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 and then pep talk, pep talk, rip, rip, pep talk, pep talk. <laughs> that's like, oh, that's his method of operation, you know. Dismantle, dismantle, pep talk, pep talk, pep talk. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he said, he's always seeming to dissolve away the ego and then lift you up in spirit. Say, remember, this is what it's all for. This is what it's really for. And we need a lot of those reminders. It's easy to get lost in the dismantling, just feeling like we're going down the sink. And that there's, it's hopeless. 
we feel helpless, we feel powerless, we feel kind of like in The Wizard of Oz, you know, when the flying monkeys come and they get a hold of the scarecrow. <laughs> the scarecrow is nothing more than shirt, pants, stuffed with straw, and what do the flying monkeys do? They start pulling straw. So there's this little head <laughs> and, a, and a shirt <laughs> and some pants laying on the road. And he, the, the straw man, you know, he can't even walk anymore after the, these monkeys get through with him. <laughs> the wicked witch. But what do his mighty companions, what do his peeps do? They, they, they put the straw back in, like, come on, we're going to go find the wizard and get out of this wicked place, wicked dream, you know. And that's, in one sense, that's when you give your purpose over to the Holy Spirit. Your mighty companions are showing up as symbols of love and support. To say, yeah, let's go on this journey together. Let's, let's be made whole again by the Spirit. Let's be shown our wholeness. And let's not be, be tempted to become too depressed at the dismantling. Because there's something much, much more that waits beyond that dismantling. So thank you. Every time you speak up, Tom, I know that mm -hmm. it's like in the face of the anxiety, you're just, you're doing it one more time, and it's slowly, it's really washing away that, that fear. Angels help you go within to wash away all dreams of sin.